Welcome to the, the working group of the Racial Disparities Advisory Panel, um, our meeting on Monday, September 27th. Um, let's do introductions. Uh, starting, Monica, you are first on my screen. Sure, thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Weber. I am the Department of Corrections designee to the panel. Uh, I believe Robin. Hi, Robin, Crime Research. Okay. Susanna. Hello, Susanna Davis, Racial Equity Director. Karen. Karen Gannett, Crime Research Group. Evan. Evan Meenan, Department of State's Attorneys and Sheriffs. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Morris, Department for Children and Families. Great. Sheila. Sheila Linton, um, Community at Large, Root Social Justice Center. Thanks. Julio. Julio Thompson, Civil Rights Unit, Attorney General's Office. Great. And Witchy, please. Uh, Witchy Artu, that I warehouse specialist appointed by Susanna Davis. Great. And I'm sorry I misunderstood your question several times, Witchy. I, I don't know what we were, we were really speaking at cross purposes. <laughs> no, that's okay. My, I sometimes just keep going and don't get to the point. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, the let's see announcement uh rebecca is ill and will not be here this evening um so that was one the second is i spoke this afternoon with representative lalonde who um is interested in figuring out how to bring legislative council in um, at least that was a lot of the conversation. Um, and one of the uh, idea, well, what he would like is perhaps two people from the working group to meet with Ledge Council outside of, yes, the working group, the RDAP meeting, your job, your family life, and all the rest. I, I, I'm sort of like, I'll ask, um, I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Um, my suggestion back to him was that he, um, he's been receiving the draft documents that we've been sending out since mid-August. And my recommendation to him was to, um, just take those and start writing legislation based on that. They're detailed enough that I should think they're fine for legislation, but especially since we're going to be looking over it again. So um, I wanted to bring that up first. Um, and this would start theoretically next week. I'm, I'm I'm happy to meet be be one of those two people uh, that meets you with are? Ledge Council. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, okay. Next ne and and next and, and and however you want to initiate that engagement, if you'd like me to reach out to Representative Lalonde, or if you wanted to relay the message, that's cool with me. Um, I have a I have a scheduled call with him again tomorrow to let him know how things have gone. So I'll I'll reach out. Great. Um, but thank you, Evan. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm I, also willing to. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on really what you want, but I think that there are some of us who could do that within the context of our jobs. But it, um, and so. He didn't all he said was it needed to be outside of the context of the Monday night meeting. Which means probably during the working day, I'm guessing, right? Ledge Council probably isn't going to come to a, a six o'clock meeting, right? Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. Okay. 
So, okay, fine. I will pass all this on to him. Um, other than that, um, there were a bunch of documents. And again, as I said in the email that I sent accompanying the documents, I realized that these come out late. I'm very aware of that. I send them. Um, I There's not much to be done about it, but that's why I put the last sentence in my note. It would be a shame to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. If we wait for it to be perfect, the report will never be written. And uh, I won't be sending things out. For, I mean, there'll be at least a week lag time. So I am doing the best I can given a situation that is not good. If anybody has another idea about how to take ideas from one week and put them together before the following week with you know, everything else that has to happen in there, please weigh in. Um, tried several things so far, none of them have worked any better. Um, but feel free. Sheila was really great at getting me to figure out how to send out uh, warnings that I had to testify or something last summer. I couldn't figure it out. She came up with a simple solution that worked really well. So somebody here may have a great idea. Feel free to weigh in. Um, but otherwise, there are the two documents that were sent. One, um, and I'll discuss the, that later, um, is sort of yet another version of the mission statement. Um, I took what people said last week and tried my best to incorporate all of that into the document. Um, so we spoke at great length, you'll recall, about the governing body and the makeup of the governing body. I did the best I could with trying to capture as many of those groups as possible without it becoming a list that was 55 people long, because I know that that also tends to get the legislature a little crazy as well. So I tried to do it as succinctly as possible. Um, it's going to have problems. Um, I get into this all the time, just as sort of an aside. When I start talking about the LGBT, et cetera, community, of which I'm a member, I've started using the term gender and sexual minorities, but I get yelled at because people want their letter. So um, that doesn't always work. Um, so you can try to be succinct and still in and like ca and capture everybody, and it doesn't work because people have a different concern and a different um, focus on what the naming means and what the naming should mean. So um, that happened here. That happened here. And I'm openly putting that out there, that that happened here, um, that this the list became shorter. We ended up, I believe, at the end with 35 different groups listed. And that would have taken um, a lot of space. So I simplified as much as I could and perhaps too much. Um, the other thing that happened was um, more of a description of what the governing body does, how it does it. Um, I also incorporated the idea about review um, that the initial staffing of the office of the four figures would change over time, f moving from a focus on architecture to, and which you're going to get my language here because I'm going to get it wrong, um, from architecture more to 
analysis and collection. Um, and I, I wrote a thing about that. Um, I'm trying to remember everything. Those are the main points that, that got put in. Um, real focus on how the governing body um, governed. <laughs> that it really wasn't about the four people being hired. It was really about, uh, uh, back to the toolkit again, the governing body running the show. Um, I also, what else did I do? That's mainly what I did. Um, I was just remembering and putting in what people had said. Um, Elizabeth had made a point about, God, what did I, Elizabeth, you made a really damn good point. Now I can't remember which one it was and I put it in. Oh, how irritating. Anyway, Elizabeth, you're in there. <laughs> God only remembers I'm sure what I, I'm sure you covered it. <laughs> I put something in there. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's what that is. And I'd say let's take time perhaps after what I'd like to focus on now and maybe take a few minutes to scan over that so that we could have a bit of a discussion about it. Uh, Witchy's hand is up. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just wondering, because you mentioned if anyone has any ideas, um, and I'm going to perhaps like try to ask Susana if she can also put in some feedback on this process. But when we were at the Racial Equity Task Force, we used Google Docs, and basically everyone could just edit at the same time, and you can see who edits what, um, and you can mm -hmm. set it. Um, and I think that's worked for me in the past, but I, do, but I know also like technology relatively is like, challenging in general so i don't know how people feel about it especially if it's a new technology for folks um and i guess susana how do you feel it worked for the racial equity task force i have a choppy connection so i'm sorry if my audio is bad um the I, I think it worked well for the task force mainly because we had a lot of people who were outside state government and so ordinarily in state government we tend to use the microsoft suite and so when we do collaborative document editing online, it tends to be in Word 365. So we can still see each other's edits, et cetera, in real time, um, but that's not necessarily universally used by people. So the Google Doc thing worked because we had a lot of people who were external to state government. This, uh, this working group or this panel, I'm not sure what everybody's limitations are. Like I've been on other work groups where they say, I can't use Google because my job doesn't permit me. So I would, I, I don't know, I would leave it to everyone else, but I suppose uh, in the spirit of inclusion, I have found that it has been an inclusive way to ensure that people who are not in state service, especially community members, can uh, use the stuff. We cannot use Google Docs. I already know that. And then I know there's a difference between use and initiate, right? Because I'm joining Zoom meetings all day, but I can't start one, according to RIT. Got it. I, uh, Evan? Uh, I don't know anything about our ability to use Google Docs uh, or initiate Google Docs, but I do think that that's a really good suggestion to use a feature like that because... You know, I reviewed the updated draft and I, I, had, I certainly had a couple of comments and I was thinking to myself, how are we going to do this if everyone has even just four or five comments? Uh, it would take a long time to sort of go around the room in a virtual meeting and each outline them and all of that kind of stuff. So I think that that might be a really efficient way for everyone to share their comments uh, on their own time as, as well in case they can't attend one of these meetings. So. That's a great idea, I think. Right. Monica. Yeah, and this comes up a lot in, in the activities that I um, have to do in my department as well. And we do have some way of using, so Microsoft Teams, you can't use, at, at, you know, you can't have external people outside of state government sort of should do the sharing of documents. But you can in SharePoint, right? So you can have a SharePoint site that lets external people 
come in and use them. And I don't know that we ever actually looked at getting a, a SharePoint location or if David ever did that. I know at one point he was investigating lots of different things. Um, SharePoint lets people from outside of state government as long as they're granted, you know, the permission ahead of time to go in and, and look at documents. So I'll talk but to Google Ask Docs. Walker. Yeah. I mean, if everybody's okay using Google Docs, we can We're not allowed out. to use Google Docs. Okay. I yeah. that that I already know from okay. Ann Walker and from David Share that this yeah. body's not allowed to use it. Okay. So we would have to use a different Platform. Ask, ask Ann oh. if she could get a SharePoint, like a SharePoint site, that, um, and then you have to get permissions for um, external parties to use it. Okay. Okay. Witchy? Uh, something also worth considering if we just want to do this a little faster, and you're allowed to use Microsoft, I can possibly, like, for one of us who's external to the government can just start a Microsoft online document and just share that link and make it accessible uh, by by link um, if we want to just like circumvent bureaucracy. Um, so just putting that out there. I hmm. I usually like circumventing bureaucracy. I'm not sure what we're supposed to do given that this is a legislative body. And so that, this is Robin, so that's what the issue is, a, a public, uh, an open meeting law? Yeah. So why wouldn't Susanna's task force come under that same? It because, because <laughs> we Created by executive order and we're advisory to the governor, so it's considered privileged and confidential. Oh. Uh huh. See, I thought we couldn't <laughs> well, no, use I mean, Google because it's, it's not a secure platform. That's my understanding <laughs> of why we couldn't use Google. <laughs> well, no. let, me, let, me specify. let me specify. Our meetings are designated as being open to the public, so we did follow um, all the meeting proto open meeting protocols whenever we could. And when we couldn't, it was fine because we technically didn't have to anyway. Um, when it came to the Google Doc, again, it was a matter of equity and we just, we did it. And there you go. I said it on a recorded meeting. We did it. <laughs> I, I do think we would just have, I mean, I, again, I don't know anything about the platforms we are and are not allowed to use as state workers. Uh, I just use what they give me. But um, regardless of what we use, I mean, I think it's, it's more a matter of the, um, public records rather than open meetings law when it comes time to the actual document. So if if we're going to be, you know, sharing sharing drafts as a group, uh, as opposed to our own individual work product, we would just want to make sure that we keep those drafts in the event we get a public records request. Mm -hmm. I SharePoint does that. It actually has drafting, right. ver it has versions and stuff. So mm -hmm. anyway, we could probably go on about this for a long time. <laughs> well, but no, it's an important point, um, particularly as writing the final, you know, we're six weeks out from that. So that's an important point. Um, I, I go ahead. And I think it could also help sort of, um, and again, I don't want to assume what was and was not on the agenda, but it might also help dictate what we, ha what we have to cover today. Because if one of the primary points was to go over this latest draft, but then we decide that a, a good way to do that would be just to, to use this sort of SharePoint site or whatever else we use, um, that might help us um, structure the rest of this evening's conversation. I, that isn't the entire agenda, but yes, that part, um, I will check in with Ann Walker, who uh, works in the Attorney General's office and knows all things about everything. And um, I, I'll check with her tomorrow and try to 
think of a way of doing this. It will likely mean learning um, for some of us a new system because it's not going to be Google Docs. We're, we're, we've been through this. I'm just letting you all know. We went through this with the first report, the very first report that we wrote. We went through this and Google Docs is not allowed. So that's not going to happen. But um, there are other um, platforms and I will, I'll ask Anne, she'll, she'll know something. She'll know something. Anything else? Just wanted to say, I, I appreciate y'all taking that into consideration. Didn't want to, you know, derail the meeting, but appreciate the, the, the discussion on it. No, it's important, Witchy. I mean, you know. It's a good suggestion. <laughs> Thank you. What I wanted to start with was a, more a discussion or a description. I, Karen, I had asked you, but I mean, Robin, I get, you know, feel you data people <laughs> <laughs> um, about the integration plan. I thought it would be good to just at least get a sense of what that is tonight. It won't take us the full time. And then um, I will work with Ann Walker starting, I hope, tomorrow to get everything else up online, even though you've got stuff now. But so, Karen, do you want to talk, or Robin, or whoever wants to start <laughs> about the data integration plan? Sure, I can sure. do that. All right. You want to go, Robin? Um, well, why don't you tell them the good news? Okay. I'd actually forgotten we had good news. This is good we news. We do. We have good news. We have good news. It's always fun. Um, so I talked to our NCJRP um, TA group this week, last week, this week. It's Monday. Wait, Karen? Last week. Yeah. Karen, can I inter I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I ask that we like... I'm so acronymed working yep. for the state. Yeah. I really yep. need to have it like out what that means. I will do that. Yeah. Sorry about Thank that. You. Um, so Vermont has been working with a technical assistance team and the project is called the national criminal justice reform project, NCJRP. And we're working with the National Governors Association and the National Criminal Justice Association on this project. And we've been working with them for um, several years now. Um, they have funded a project. It went from a pretrial service project to a different mm -hmm. project. And I'm not going to go into all the details of that. But one of the things that has remained constant through all the conversations is this idea of having um, data governance and data integration. So when Arnold Ventures is funding the project and when they had us write a plan for the funding, one of the primary and key pieces of the plan was to have some data and part of it be a data integration project. And we put in some funding for a project coordinator. And the project coordinator position um, it was initially something else, but we, we changed the scope to be a person out of the enterprise unit of the Agency of Digital Services to help with the coordination of doing the data integration work. And I'll, I can talk about the work in a minute. Um, the scope change was submitted, oh God, probably a few months back. And we just got word last week that they've accepted the scope change for that funding. And DPS can now hire someone from the Agency of Digital Services to do the coordination of the data integration work for the National Criminal Justice Reform Project. So this is big news for us because we've been waiting to hear about this for a while. And that our, our TA team 
Um, we have one person from the National Governors Association and one person from the National Criminal Justice Association in talking with them. They're the folks that are also funding Mo West, who came and talked to us earlier as we just got the... Um, they talked to the whole RDAP team just before the study committee was put together. He's from SEARCH, which is the national um, national experts on criminal justice data integration and data sharing. And so they're funding him to work with us. And then we'll have the local person from the um, Agency of Digital Service to work with us as well. And what they've offered is that it's kind of a combined project with RDAP. So the data integration piece is data integration for the National Criminal Justice Association project, but also for RDAP. So we, we have some funding to do this. The next steps in the process, I think um, actually we've talked with ADS, Agency of Digital Service, quite some time ago, and they have a person that they've identified that's within their enterprise unit to, to work on the project. What now has to happen is an extension of all the contracts um, that they have. So the one with um, Department of Public Safety and the one with um, us at Crime Research Group. And then um, once the DPS contract is done with um, the National Governors Association, then um, Department of Public Safety and Agency of Digital Service will have to do some kind of agreement so DPS can actually hire the person out of their office or pay for that person to work with the, the groups. So we're getting closer. Um, I don't know how long these the it'll take to put these agreements in place, but there will be a person out of the Agency of Digital Service that can help us, that will be committed to doing. And I think it'll be... I think the amount of funding can fund a half-time person for up to a year, which is, you know, not a bad thing. It'll get us a good start. Um, so that's that's the good news. Well, we'll and if have I were some... a betting person, I would say that the contracting process with state government and the bill that has yet to be written will be done at, like, the bill will pass and the contracts might be signed. Um, and that's, so they can that's start at the same time. That's an optimistic view from Robin, which is, you know, always an interest. <laughs> 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 but so, I mean, the good thing is, is that this is um, not dependent on the legislation passing this session. Um, so this work is going to go on no matter what they do. Monica, you have a question. Well, actually, I wanted to ask, I wasn't sure if people knew, because Karen mentioned the Department of Public Safety a few times, and I wasn't sure if people were aware that that, that the NCJRP project that, that she's referencing kind of started with, and is, is sort of housed there. They are really like the fiscal agent for the project, which I think, I think it's important for people to know, like that there is a Department of Public Safety connection here and maybe that wasn't you know maybe that was clear when mo came i'm just i'm just not really sure and i'm very excited that we have that coordinator position um and i think it could influence the way we talk about um, how the work could be presented in the report as well knowing that that's going to happen at this point okay witchy yeah um maybe I'm missing context here because I'm out of the loop and I came in a little bit later, but um, I was just wondering um, how does that uh, data integration project uh, relate to our report and hope for uh, criminal justice statistics? Sure. Um, so the data integration project that, that we talked about um, for this report and for the National Criminal Justice Project is actually the same thing. Um, that right now there's a lot of data sharing that does go on, um, but uh, we need somebody from, from ADS, and, and the reason why uh, we're starting with ADS is because uh, they're responsible for most of the data that, um, that we want for this project, right? The only, ones, the only data set that's outside of ADS's jurisdiction right now is the judiciaries. Um, so Monica, um, her, her staff um, are ADS, 
the Department of Public Safety, um, which is how you would extract all the police data. Um, their staff are ADS. Um, DCF has their own ADS staff um, that help with their data systems. So ADS is the coordinating agency. Um, it <clears throat> will build the bridges that you need to create the data sets to have the analysis done outside of, you know, by the independent groups. Um, it's not going to be a system where you go and you know, sit down at a computer and write a query that's going to reach across all avenues of state government um, to give you a, an answer. Um, I, I, that's not going to happen. But this is going to build the bridges across the data systems and do the crosswalking and say that, you know, um, in Monica's jail tracker system uh, or the offender management system, the last name is a pretext form. Uh, 10 characters long, but in the judiciary, it's 15 characters long, so how do we make it work? Um, that's the sort of nuts and bolts of the stuff that it's going to get so that the the, um, the Bureau, the Office of Social Justice Statistics, can have the data that it needs to do its job. Does that answer? Yeah, that, that, that answers a lot. So basically that's like a stepping stone towards having the data warehouse sort of like getting that, that leg up without setting the great. Awesome. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Evan. You have your hand up, Evan. I, I do have my hand up. Um, and I don't know whether or not the answer to this question is known. Um, but I see that the Department of State's Attorneys is one of the entities from which deliverables might be expected. And so yeah. I wasn't sure whether or not um, the process for engaging with all of the individual state entities that might have to produce information has been established yet. I'm just trying to figure out like whether or not I need to be proactive in reaching out to someone or engaging with our in-house IT person or whether or not it's really going to be engagement with ADS and then we'll just find out when we're needed <laughs> sort of thing. Um, well, I think you're still stuck on that committee, so you still have to go to those meetings when we have them. Oh, I'll be there. Um, I'll be there. <laughs> Some of it um, might but just as go. Far as, yeah, so as far as the nuts and bolts of it, um, again, we have to get through the whole contracting process with the state. So just your right now, everyone's membership on that committee, um, and um, that's, that's all that's needed right now. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks for answering that question. Sure. I'm, I'm curious, in, in what we've written so far, um, the four positions that we suggested for the staffing of the um, office are architect, engineer, analyst, and project manager. This is all something different, correct? Correct. Yes. Thank you. It could be, yeah. I mean, I think this is a discussion we should have, though, not tonight, that yes, um, what, like, what do you want the engineer um, to engineer? Um, and what do you want the architect in, in social, in, in the office to, um, to architect? Um, and I think that when those are defined a little bit better, then um, the, the relationship between the two might become clear. I think it's, I think it's a, a more <clears throat> fluid relationship right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. Monica. Yeah, I think that's an area where we're where as this progresses and as we start to think about this report that we may want to I don't know, the, the, think about these words and these positions a little bit differently. Um knowing that I think Karen mentioned at one of our previous meetings particularly with with ADS now, you know, officially sort of putting 
and architecture together, like they have people who are going to be doing that. And so are we thinking about how are we describing these words um, or these positions? And if, if they're really going to be the right positions, I've, I've still wondered that. And I wonder that even more now that um, the NCGRP project is going to be moving forward. Um, we may, we may decide we don't need an architect or an engineer, but we need more another analyst. analyst. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and Monica, what at what point in the government hierarchy do you get your own ADS person? So, like, oh, I, you know, I'm not, question? I'm not 100 percent sure. Like at the department level, so I mean, it depends. ADS has a bunch of different people. Okay, right. So, <laughs> departments have um, IT managers, and these I the IT managers sort of act as you know, the go-betweens between the department, the department needs, and, and then other um, structures within ADS in terms of, you know, who runs the architect, who runs the servers, who does right. a lot of the, the back of the house kind of like running of wires and putting things together, right? Our IT managers don't do that, but different divisions within ADS do that. And each department, and I think this is what um, DPS is is working on right. We have our own sort of agreement with ADS. It's like a service agreement. This is what you're going to do for us, and th essentially, this is how much we we pay you as a department. We, that's why Karen, and that's why this project needed money, because right. ADS needed resources for it. So then, I think it's like an asterisk somewhere that where this ends up. ADS may already be there, right? Or, or that, so to go back to those job descriptions, some of that may be covered by a person from ADS in that department. But would okay. need the, another uh, agreement, right? The department, the department itself would need funds to pay right. a, that ADS. To pay ADS. So I yeah. think that's yeah. something that should be, considered in the legislation and then also that whole big thing about wherever you put it. Um, because if it goes outside of state government, I mean, sorry, if it goes to like the Secretary of State's office, he doesn't fall under ADS. So then you're going to need somebody to talk to ADS. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Which I, uh, I just want to make a note on sort of like those four just four positions. Um, I do I do think that it's having more to do with responsibility rather than having position. Um, I do think, in my opinion, those are the baseline responsibilities for building a warehouse, whether they're outsourced or they're given to ADS in, within the department or like they're hired in. Uh, but those are the baselines. And I would highly recommend you don't go less than that. Uh, you can look for ways to make it cheaper, but but don't go less than that because that'll that'll make the project really lag. It's it's currently worded as this office should initially be staffed as follows and have the following responsibilities: architect, oh. engineer, analyst, project manager. It's not it's not really positions. Got it. And I'm happy to be the one to like write in a little bit more about what those responsibilities mean and, and add some tech uh, like what needed. That's a good because and after we get this on SharePoint, it'll be easy. Um, so uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Witchy. For sure. Richie, and I think when you read the um, the proposed statewide justice information sharing governance structure structure as as we've been calling it here, the infrastructure governance group, um, I think some of the thinking that we've been having around this, at least at the national criminal for the National Criminal Justice Reform Project, and what we've shared with RDAP, you'll see a little bit more of the thinking through this. Um, and this is something that Mo actually helped write. Actually, Mo primarily wrote it. Um, and he did some data. He did the data infrastructure work for um, 
the state of Washington. So this is kind of, we learned from him, NCJRP, our, our core team learned from him as to what actually data integration means um, and how you do it. It took me, you know, it says you, you repeat sub, something seven times, you might get it. And it probably took me more like 10 times to get it. But um, I finally can say it succinctly, um, which I'm happy about because I couldn't repeat these three pages of words actually. But you'll get a, you'll get a sense of, of where the thinking is. And basically just for everybody, it's about having um, a governance team that really focuses on um, the infrastructure and the data elements that need to be um, developed and acquired. And then really looking at, and what does that governance committee do? So the plan talks about um, having a charter, um, having an inventory of, of current justice technology, having um, looking at data needs and requirements, um, doing an information sharing gap analysis, which Evan, I think about you every time I think of gap analysis, like what can and what can we get out of your system and what can't we get out of your system? And how do we, you know, is there something we need from you that we need to figure out? Um, the strategic plan for technology. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, the, the policy committee and what policies have to be developed around this, the deliverables for that committee, which is the charter, the interagency agreement or MOU and the strategic plan and then having a data requirements committee. So what data do we actually need and how do we get that from the different departments? And there's a set of deliverables for that um, group as well. Um, and then there's the architecture committee. So it, it goes right along with what you put in there for um, responsibilities, for staff and responsibilities. And um, the architecture committee, obviously figuring out what does the um, integration architecture need to look like. And then I added to this the staff support, which is that position at the um, Agency of Digital Services. And there's a description in there of just what we suggested this person, the qualifications this person needs to have and, um, and what they would be doing um, to help coordinate all these activities. And that's one of the reasons I didn't pull together a smaller group to talk about this because we really need that person, that staff person from ADS to help us kind of coordinate all these activities. So, um, and I think this is um, with you what Robin wants to talk with you more about in detail. And I think that will, having your thoughts about this will be really helpful. All right, fun. I'll, I'll make a point to read it uh, before then. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions? I had one because Karen, your your last comment was was actually one of my questions about the updated draft that Atom put together, which was like, when are we supposed to be engaging with ADS about this? You know, I don't want to like start making decisions and then realize, shoot, you know, what we decided is not possible, practical, or any other word to that effect. So it sounds like. It sounds like you think that, that that time might be on the horizon. Well, they've actually, so so there is an ADS staff person that works with the Department of Public Safety, and he's been a part of many of these conversations. And at one point, um, and Kristen McClure has actually, she's, she's the uh, chief data officer. She's also been parts of these, been in part of these conversations. So they're aware this is going on. We've already had conversations with them about how much it would cost for the person um, in their enterprise unit. That's how I know it's going to be about half time for a year um, or more time for less than a year. Um, so they've been engaged peripherally around this and they they know that this is moving forward and that we've been waiting to hear about this funding. I'm trying to think if I've told anybody about the funding yet, except you all. Um, but um, Chris Herrick is the deputy commissioner over at um, DPS, is the person that kind of has been leading the charge on the NCJRP 
um, project and um, working closely with Darwin. So they're aware. Um, but and, Evan, are you thinking about you're about to buy a new system and you don't want to buy a system that's not going to play? No, no, I, no, I wasn't thinking about that. I was, I was, you know, in the, in the draft, we've got like these diagrams that talk about where the data is going to come mm -hmm. from. And then there is a reference to the data integration and information plan. Um, and it referenced all executive branch data that's controlled by ADS. And that just thought to me, oh, I, I don't think I had heard from, you know, I don't think we had had anyone from ADS as part of these calls and it just occurred to me when should we start engaging oh. with them oh i see um we did um before you joined okay um, okay Sweet. yeah um and so um our talk with uh kristen mcclure resulted in one of those spaghetti maps in the last report um so yes um they they were engaged here she is invited to these um But hasn't been able to make it, I guess. But she, she, they, you know, she is aware of this. And I, I also, I think, and I was just looking back in the report. I think, to, you know, ADS's involvement and how they're involved really does kind of depend on where the office is situated. Yeah. And so that that has to be a question that's answered. Whether or not we answer it, but somebody's going to have to answer it, and then their role either is as another partner or as, you know, really people who are going to be building it. Yeah. They're going to okay. build it for the NCGRP project regardless, it sounds like. So. Right. Okay. Anything else? Karen, do you need... Is there, is there any point in, I mean, as Robin says, um, Kristen's, I mean, she's copied on every email that goes out to the working group. Um, is there any point in making another, I mean, I've made several formal overtures is there a point in doing that again? I think now that the funding has been approved, I think it's worth having a conversation with her about how um, the National Criminal Justice Reform Project and RDAP um, interface with each other around the data integration piece. I think that would be a good conversation to have with her just to give her kind of a heads up on that. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to pull that, something together? That would be lovely if you would, because yeah. I, I I seem to be unsuccessful chronically. Well, uh, I'm not saying I'll be any more successful, but I'll give it a <laughs> shot. How's that? That would be lovely. Thank you. Okay. And and who should be at that at that meeting? Well, it would be. Uh, hold on. I'm. Oh, Monica's going. Bye, Monica. <laughs> Um, I was hoping that we would, it would be nice if it could be the working group, I think, wouldn't it? Sure. I mean, that's my hope. It'd be us. Um, I'm not sure she's going to come to a six o'clock meeting. I think that mm -hmm. may be one of the, the issues here, but I can ask her for some dates that she's available and just send them out to the working group and see who can okay. join us or do a doodle that, poll with the, the time she's available. Sure. Okay, that would I'll do great. that. Thank you. Sure. That would be great. Because, um, yeah, I we certainly moved into that section. That is the other thing. I mean, that's one of the big, uh, this was one big unknown. The other big unknown is still, where are we putting this? That, that's, those are the two still, there is like, there's more to this as of now than there was a week ago, but, um, so the, the one thing that's still the big, really not yet 
ironed out, although we have talked about, um, is where it goes. And that has to get ironed out. In fact, Representative Lalonde asked today if there had been progress. I said, well, there's been progress. That doesn't mean we have an answer. Um, you know, those two things are not necessarily mutually exclusive. So um, that's something we need to work on. I also want to just mark that for us in our minds, because one of the things that we had promised to do starting with this meeting going forward is keeping a running list of major questions that need to be brought to the full body at the full meetings. And for me, this is like at the top. And I think everyone is sick and tired of talking about it. And I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to talk about it. Um, has there been any, has, has anyone, because I, I, I wasn't able to attend a couple of, of these, has anyone proposed an, a home that, that already exists aside from the agency of administration? Secretary of State. Got it. But as Robin points out, there are some problems with that. Well, and has anyone asked the secretary? I'm sorry? Has anyone asked the secretary of state? Um, in a very, um, like, oh, here we are at Hannaford's, and do you have a moment kind of way? <laughs> It, it, it hasn't been, um, there hasn't been the formal conversation yet. That is in the offing, however. Yeah, because, right, if it goes to a, um, his office in particular, or um, I, I think at some point the Defender General had also uh, suggested the auditor's office, they're yes. going to have their own staffing needs. So whatever you put in, right, they're going to want to have a say in that. Right. So, um, and of course, the other thing for all of us to bear in mind is this is all going to look incredibly different after it goes through the meat grinder that is the legislature. Um, it, it, whatever we recommend, it's all going to look very, very different. Um, but thank you, Karen and Robin. And congratulations. Thanks. So um, that is really, that was the main focus this evening. I would have liked, had I been able to get things out to you earlier, to have talked about um, the mission statement. That did not happen. Um, I'm not going to apologize again. You're tired of it. Um, but, uh, I will speak with Ann Walker tomorrow and look into these different platforms for getting it online. Um, the one thing that I would like to say, Elizabeth, is really sort of towards you. Um, I'm, I'm haunted personally by, frankly, really like our first report, which didn't, you were really good about saying so much of, there's so much overlap between the adult criminal justice system and a lot of stuff that goes on for juveniles. I mean, I remember you're saying that last week in reference to a couple points that were brought up. Um, I still have this lingering concern it just doesn't feel like we're doing it right. And I would really like to just sort of encourage you as soon as we get this online, could you attack what's there? I mean, thank you. I, 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 would, I would really, I just wanted to make a point of saying that because I don't like how I worded it. I really don't like how I worded it. You're muted. I'm reading your lips. Was it my headphones? Does that work? 
Yeah, I think I think these headphones, the the speaker doesn't work on them, but um, I would be more than happy to attack it and uh, add you. it. I think the bones are there in the report. I think it just needs to be emphasized in certain ways um, that, you know, for instance, when we're talking, I know Monica's left, but when we're talking about something to do with DOC, that we're remembering, you know, YOs um, and all of those different pieces. Um, so I think it just needs um, someone to go through and kind of really emphasize those pieces and pull it out. And I'm happy to do that. And I can... I can have uh, I can play that to Tyler as well, so the two of us can can address okay. it. Okay, so. great. Thank you. That that's just the big thing that has been weighing. I've just been sort of looking yeah, at it going. Yeah. Nah. I mean, it, there, you know, there are, you know, to your point, there are very, um, there there are differences in the JJ world in um, comparison to the adult side, um, and um, you know, all of the same entities have have some um relationship with juveniles and it just needs to be um just needs to be pulled out in the report so i'm happy to do it okay great thank you um and that's all i have for tonight that's all i have does anyone else have anything that they would like to bring up put in thank you again to karen and robin for well, congratulations and thank you. <laughs> for thank you. I mean that that's a huge piece of the project, I think. Well, it's a, it's another step in 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 the right direction that we're all going in. So I think that's just makes it helpful. Um mm -hmm. I was wondering Aton if it might be worth talking about and and I'm not sure it is, but but let me throw it out there. Um Robin put together you know, we've we've had a couple conversations and Robin put together just a brief sheet for you to look at around the way the human trafficking task force and steering committee are put together that really involves could be I mean I'll say massive amounts of people on the task force. And with the conversation that people had last week about the list of 35 entities that should be involved in this somehow. I was wondering if throwing that out there today um, oh. and just and just as an idea might be worth it so people can consider that. Sure. I, uh, okay, I, is this the document that's enti entitled Task Force? Yes, yeah. and we I don't think we sent that out to anybody, but I thought maybe no. Robin could just talk a little bit about how oh. that task force <laughs> is put together just to give people an idea of how do we involve as many people as possible because there's so many people interested in this work. So how do we do that without yeah, putting so, them all on the steering committee? Go right. ahead, Robin. <laughs> yeah, so this was just my own idea, and I'm you know, um, as I was listening to to everybody last week, and that whole who who's on a who's on a committee. So, the Human Ta Trafficking Task Force is organized differently than Susanna's task force. Um, it's not by executive order. It's actually just um, they they had some external funding, but they've just been around for a very long time. They were actually one of the first task forces um, to tackle human trafficking in the country. And the steering committee is co-chaired um, by. Uh, three people, um, a representative from the U.S. Attorney's Office, um, a, a therapist who um, works with, with with victims and survivors, and I don't know where Cindy McGuire is now. Um, I thought she was with the AG's office, but she, she may have moved on to somewhere else. But um, so, and then the people who sit on the steering committee um, are who you who, you know who you would expect um, representatives from service providers and victims advocates, um, some law enforcement, um, DCF, uh, a few other people, and then there's this huge task force. And one of the reasons why I kind of like their meetings um, is that I actually get to see people I don't normally see um, at all. I come across at all in my work. Um, so one time. I'm sitting next to a nun, um, and we were chatting about, you know, how her church, um, you know, works in this area and what, you know, she was there to learn how to identify uh, human trafficking in the, in the people that she served. Um, and all of the 
the, the larger task force is all self-selected. And they tend to do these quarterly meetings. And the first part of the meeting is um, instructive. Uh, so, um, you know, some of the things I thought about for, you know, this, this group for uh, social justice and social equity uh, would be about, you know, have a dispatcher come in and show you the screens. Um, how do they get, what happens when that 911 call happens? How do they deploy um, a, a vehicle? How does the data even get entered? So then everybody knows what the government is collecting when they do this. Um, and you can um, have that transparency and maybe get a chance for other people to um, participate and have questions um, and form those questions. Um, they also have, within this larger task force, self-selected subcommittees. Um, and those subcommittees deal with um, for human trafficking, education, um, housing, victim services. Um, it's, but again, it's self-selected um, topics and self-selected membership. Uh, and it, you do just get a wider variety of people who can participate without having that long list of people in the legislation that somebody's going to invite. Um, and I think that this is an important enough issue that making it open to as many Vermonters as possible to have a say to end this um, or to you know, have more transparency in our government is a, is, a, is a different way to approach it. That's my soapbox. I like that, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't know I was supposed to get that out, I'm sorry. No, no, you didn't, no, no. You didn't know. We, <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, that's a good idea. So let I will put that up too, if I might, as soon as I, I'm assuming that this is not hard, this putting things up on a online platform. I'm assuming this is easy, and I'm assuming that because I want to assume it. Um, because otherwise I feel sort of self-destructive. <laughs> so I'm assuming this is going to be very easy. And um, I will put that document, all these documents up on there. And I'm sure there are ways of indicating which ones are for editing and which ones are for reading. And I will uh, work at getting that all done. So, Thank you, Robin, for that, because that is a problem. <laughs> that is a problem. And it was one that came up after last week's work. So thank you. Uh, anything else? No. OK. Well, thank you for another successful meeting. Um, I will be in touch as I can be and as I need to be, and I will again talk, I'll let you know what happens um, in my phone call with Representative Lalonde tomorrow. I'll send out a note um, and we'll go from there. Excellent. And Thank the, you. All right. Sure. Thank you, right. Witchy. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right. Good night, Good everyone. Night. Thank you. Night. Thank you.